Hello, Farrister here, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Star Citizen ship, the Anvil F7CM Super Hornet. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing, and the Super Hornet is one of the flyable ships. The Super Hornet is a dual-seat combat fighter, meaning you can bring a friend along with you. I've followed the usual format for this review, splitting into five sections, starting with a ship tour and deck flow, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating and purchasing costs, and finally, summarising. I have included timestamps in the video description to help you navigate to each part of the review, and if you enjoy this review, please do subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, that helps you to be notified of future videos, and helps me to grow the audience. Part 1. Ship Tour and Deck Layout This part of the review is very easy for the Super Hornet. There are no decks to talk about, just two seats. A front pilot seat, and a rear co-pilot seat. That's it, nowhere to walk about, nowhere to visit the facilities. This is a combat ship, and every inch of it is dedicated to combat. Access is via a ladder located on the left or port side of the fighter. Only one person can get in at a time, but that's about it. Okay. Part 2. Combat Performance So, as a heavy combat fighter, the weapons options are fairly good. The nose can either equip a turret with a double size 1 weapon layout, or alternatively switch that for a nice fixed size 3. It's the same for the two wing-mounted weapons, coming with a gimbaled size 2 weapon by default, but also swappable for a fixed size 3. And finally, the ball turret, adding to the firepower with a dual size 2 weapon layout, it's also possible to swap out that ball turret for a single size 4 weapon. There are 8 size 1 missiles in the stock variant. So, for the footage, it's important to point out that I've swapped out the three pilot weapons for Mantis GT220s, which are my go-to weapon in Star Citizen. To begin with, the firepower is the same whether you've got a co-pilot gunner or not. With the back seat empty, the ball turret simply goes to pilot control, so you don't lose out by operating the Super Hornet solo. The advantage of having a rear gunner is that the Super Hornet could engage more than one target at the same time, and covering a wider arc. And that firepower is fairly good. The Super Hornet feels like a heavy fighter, especially when all of the guns are brought on target. The missiles give a nice little extra punch. It's quite happy engaging larger ships, such as a Cutlass or Constellation, but it doesn't feel quite so happy if they return fire. That's because the real challenge is survivability. In fairness, the Hornet feels well armoured and bulky. That is to say, it's very easy to lose parts of the fighter and keep flying and fighting. But it's also very easy to lose parts, largely due to the two size 1 shield generators not doing a very good job of keeping you safe. And that's a real shame, especially when I start to compare the Super Hornet to the Vanguard that I reviewed recently, they just feel very different. Part 3. Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, and as you might expect from a fighter, the cockpit gives for a great all-round visibility. Other than the support struts, which I suspect are there to add an X-Wing vibe, there's really nothing to impede the pilot's vision to the front or sides. And although there isn't any window beneath the pilot's feet, it's still very easy to take off or land with the Super Hornet owing to the canopy design. In the cold vacuum of space, the Super Hornet handles very well, particularly at space combat manoeuvring speeds. Although tangibly heavier than some of the light fighters, the nose still points responsively, and notably the ball turret, when human operated, has a very quick gimbal. The Super Hornet accelerates and decelerates well, including to higher cruise speeds. It's worth mentioning though, that if she has taken combat damage, that can degrade the turning performance somewhat, as invariably some of the thrusters are the first to go. In atmosphere, particularly with the updated atmospheric flight model, the Super Hornet handles fairly well. It's not the most nimble, but it's easy to control, and with bursts of afterburner fuel can kick the rear back to where you're pointed. It's still comfortable to fly in atmosphere, or near the surface of a moon, and doesn't feel dangerous to get nice and low. 
Part 4 Operating Costs Rearming and refueling the Super Hornet is cheap. I've really not seen the cost anywhere above a few hundred Alpha UEC. Repairs can add up to a few hundred, but if you've been doing missions, you should comfortably make a profit. The Super Hornet doesn't have any cargo storage or anywhere to place physicalized boxes, which means it's largely restricted to combat contracts. It can do fairly well in that space. I'm sure a good pilot could take on the claim jumper missions with confidence, but I found myself sticking to the contracts where I knew the enemy wouldn't have too much firepower. But if combat is your bag, it'll turn a profit. I was quite surprised by the range of the Quantum Drive, as although the stock drive is very slow, actually the Super Hornet has got a range which covers most of the Stanton system. And part 5, The Verdict. Thinking about the potential for the Super Hornet to be a fighter aboard a larger ship such as an Idris, I could see that making for some quite interesting gameplay. Particularly, it feels comfortable to make short hops between moons, and it's great for getting to the surface of a planetary body. As a standalone ship in the verse right now though, it'll only do one thing, combat, and it doesn't feel like the most confident choice for combat either. Particularly for those looking to get a couple of players on board, something like a Cutlass or Vanguard would feel much more appropriate. And that's the confusing thing for me. At $165, or just over 2 million Alpha credits, it's actually cheaper to buy a Cutlass Black, which is a more versatile ship. Sure, it doesn't pack quite the same firepower, but it'll allow you to experience more content and still comes with a relatively strong armament. So I'm a bit torn on this one. Super Hornet has been my go-to fighter since the early days of Arena Commander. When I dug it out, I really wanted to like it more. I think it's just let down by the weak shields. And because they're just size 1, there aren't any super attractive upgrade options for that, which is a real shame. Once again, thank you to all those of you who subscribe to the channel. Please press that like button if you enjoyed watching. For anybody looking for a group who plays the current patch of Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. And to close out, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll hear from me in the next video.